I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks on horror babble recently, and thought I'd make something creepy and otherworldly for this video. This ping pong ball will become some strange technology like you'd see in Tales from the Loop. And you could do this by slicing up some caps, which I did here originally, but then I went ahead and 3D modeled something to make it a bit more detailed and uniform. Like always, the STL file will be available on my Patreon. The good thing about having a slight lip around the edge means the hole doesn't need to be perfectly round, which is actually pretty tough to accomplish if you want to try it yourself. Filing down one spot to soften the plastic and turning the ball around while cutting will do a decent job. If you know a better way, let me know in the comments. For the base of this diorama, I started with foam, but that was not working out. I opted to carve into the MDF base instead. This spoon carving knife has come in handy for this type of thing. I'm still not resigned to messing up my new cutting mat, so you'll see me using the old one over top until something spills on the new one and I don't mind anymore. The good thing about using the spoon knife and gouges is I can get concave shapes fairly easily. Now it's time for some tentacles. I took some oven baked clay and rolled it between two smooth surfaces until I got a shape and taper I wanted. Then, using some toothpicks, I was able to get a nice worm-like ribbed texture. This brand of clay is really soft and picks up fingerprints instantly, so I needed to sculpt these without touching them with my fingers. Which was not that easy, especially since I cured them with a heat gun. And by putting the heat a little too close and a little too long, you can get some awesome bubbling texture like this. I thought the ball needed a third tentacle coming out of the top, so I sculpted another. Next, I moved on to prepping the base. I would normally use Mod Podge as a base coat and sealant, but I went with gesso this time. Unfortunately, the white gesso swallowed up any ink and paint that I added to it and I ended up with just this gray when I wanted a brown. Oh well, I'll paint over top of that. The gesso was messy, but I do like the finish. Mixing up a slightly warm dark brown, I gave the base a coat of paint. And then followed up with burnt sienna and green blotches. While I was sculpting, I made these organic rings to be the points of contact from the tentacles. And then broke out a bits box to find some metal rings. I may have added a few too many details, but I'll tone it down with the paint job. I grabbed some peanut butter and blacked out the inside. And I remade the third tentacle at a more fitting angle. With the ball ready for painting, I used this cap to temporarily mask the inside and provide a painting handle. This slick plastic will separate from the superglue easily later. Off to the spray booth for some browns and oranges on the ball and some magenta and purple for the tentacles. Making sure to hit all the organic details. This ball is looking good and rusty, so let's keep most of that. I'm trying another new product, which is a masking goop that is dirt cheap here. It's less than $2 for this bottle. Let's see if it works. I sprayed green over top and went ahead and peeled the mask off. It looks like it worked, so I sealed it all in with a coat of matte varnish. 
Oh look, a tree that's been painted already. The base gets a patchy layer of coconut coir sifted through a tea strainer. This is the smallest mesh I could find at the dollar store, and it does a fine job for this scale. My adhesive of choice is still matte varnish. With the soil down, I moved on to my base grass in sawdust flock. And then I added a patchy layer of 2mm static grass in a way too bright yellow. The tentacles got a final dry brushing of pink and magenta. And I knocked the brightness of that grass back with some airbrushed shading. Now let's meet our little friend for this scene. He's some kind of cyborg running diagnostics on the alien sphere. As usual, I made sure to hold the mini almost completely off camera while painting so you'd miss most of it. <laughs> but honestly, he's just there to balance things out visually. I painted some additional details onto the rotting stump and then shook on some contrasting flocks of green and orange. Next it was puddle time. There was a sale on this UV resin recently, so I thought I'd try it out. Before curing it, I sprinkled on some grass flock to blend in the edges. And after curing, I used gloss varnish for the same purpose. I added a few bits of preserved moss here and there, just to break up the level of foliage. The whole ball got a dusting with rust weathering powder. And all of the tentacles got carefully glued into place. After that, I removed the masking tape painted the edge of the base, and it was done. I mentioned Tales from the Loop earlier, but Rot and Rust on Instagram was another inspiration for this diorama. And speaking of inspiring, thank you to my supporters on Patreon for keeping the gears turning. They are Sensei Level Jimmy G, Scratch Builders Andrew Price, Michael Dahti, Spaghetti Alamode, Harker, Kitsch and Paul Bachtel, and my dollar store enablers. I do love the dollar store. If you'd like to help the channel out too, there are links in the description of this video. As always, thank you all for watching, and let me know what you thought of it by leaving a comment. Go create something, and I'll see you on the next build.